There are over 400 animals in the safari park that between them consume over 800 tons of food a year. Their appetites may vary, but from the biggest animals out in the park to the smallest ones in Pet's Corner, what goes in one end still has to come out the other. Longleat's animals produce a staggering one and a half thousand tons of dung every year. Enough to cover a football pitch 50 times over. And that means an awful lot of mucking out. Deputy Head Warden Ian Turner has seen his fair share of filth. Can you imagine this rhino we've got here? This is a real man there. You'd be talking three or four wheelbarrows per day just from him alone. And we've got giraffes, zebras, camels, lions, and coley, monkeys, a whole lot, all mixed together. You get one massive big pile of manure. They're every single keeper, and they can't escape the mucking out, which is always the, the sign where all the muckies and the manure and stuff, every keeper has to end up doing that somewhere on the lines. I mean, the Pets Corner staff, they've got the smaller manure, but it's harder, because it's a dustpan and brush. You've got to get in all the nicks and crannies, whereas these lot, it's a lot, but it's a big shovel in a big wheelbarrow and tipped away. Faced with such a mountain of muck, the keepers sweep and shovel relentlessly. There's no giant loo you can flush it all down, so the safari park have come up with an environmentally friendly solution. Once a week, all the dung in the park is collected from drop-off points and taken to the animal dung equivalent of Everest. If you can't guess, this is the dung heap. There's, looks like, giraffe dung. Well, that looks like, yeah, that's rhino by the looks of that. And literally, all this area here, and that bar behind us, is all the muck, what causes the safari park. It's left here to rot down, and eventually, it's all put in a muck spreader and put back on the field to make the grass grow. And you can see, it's good stuff, that is. In Britain, millions of tonnes of cattle, pig and poultry manure are spread on agricultural land every year. Here on the Longleat Estate, farmers like Steve Crossman use something much more exotic. Well, we spread it on the ground and we, it's to replenish all the food that's been taken out of the ground. You know, we, grass needs to be fed and uh, all the dung is, is put on and it replaces all the bits and pieces that have uh, come out of the ground that the grass has used to make the hay in the summer months. The more organic matters that we can actually put back into the grain, obviously the better. It's cheaper. You know, the, 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 there is a waste product which is good for the ground um, and uh, it's put back in as a good balance. To complete the environmentally friendly cycle, the hay which grows on this fertilised land is fed back to the safari park animals in the winter. Farmers and keepers may do the recycling here on the estate, but in the wild, there's someone else to do the job. It's the African dung beetle. And for this little fellow, a pile of muck is seventh heaven. In Africa, up to 16,000 beetles have been counted in just one heap of elephant dung. They also mate in it, lay eggs in it, and burrow into the ground, taking it with them. In fact, one dung beetle can bury 250 times its own body weight in a single night, which is the equivalent of an 11 stone man burying four bull elephants. Appropriately enough, Pets Corner called their dung beetle Hercules. But now, tragically, this poor little chap appears to have lost his natural desire for dung. Old Hercules here. Um, I call him Old Hercules because, in fact, he is an aged beetle and we've had him a, a couple of years. We got him from a, another collection um, and he was their last dung beetle they had and, and they sort of permanently loaned him to us. We were doing an exhibition here. And they said, when he brought him, they said... Um, he actually eats fruit. And of course, I laugh because I was under the same impression as everybody else here at Longley. Dung beetles eat dung. Everybody knows that. But he's more than happy eating a bit of ripe fruit. <laughs> so I don't know whether he's an exceptional. Perhaps it's just because he's a bachelor and he ain't got a girlfriend or something. I don't know.
obviously this guy if he was if he was doing his job properly as as we we think evolution said he should be you can probably see he's designed on his front claw or front forearms if you want to call it that he's got special like they're not they're not quite pincers they're more like brushes and they use them to to either push the balls of poo, poo along in some species or obviously to shovel the poo and get their way through it it's all pretty it seems all pretty disgusting but that's what they're, they're designed for so what i'm proposing to do is just to you know settle this once and for all i'm going to go and get a bit of poo i'm going to leave the section i'm going to go up and get some real poo i don't know some rhino poo or something like that he might push it he might dig it he might do something so it will solve a mystery